Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day here in the end times in paradise in the world's most beautiful campsite on the shores of Baker Lake here on this beautiful Sunday morning in the end times, August 27th, 2017, I believe. So, uh, being Sunday, it is time for me to bring you my Doomsday Sermon. I don't know if you're going to get one or two sermons today, but this will be the short sermon. And I mentioned this uh, story on Friday in my Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant, and I'm simply going to read the entire essay after I put down my little dog from a fellow I've never heard of. This is brother, uh, what is this? Fred Berkovich. Fred Berkovich uh, sermonizing in mongabay.com. Fred, who are you, Fred? Uh, well, there we go. Fred Berkovich, PhD, is executive director of Save the Giraffes. He's also adjunct professor of Wildlife Research Center <clears throat> in Kyoto University, Japan, and adjunct professor of Department of Animal, Wildlife, and Grassland Sciences at the University of the Free State in South Africa. Quite the uh, interesting resume, Fred. So Fred today is going to preach and educate us on the world's first biotocide. I guess, I don't know if it's biotocide or bioticide. I don't know why it just doesn't call it the ecocide, but ecocide, bioticide, it means just how we are, we humans, no shit Sherlock, are killing the planet. We are literally dismantling the entire biosphere of the planet. So uh, this is his view of the state of the planet in 2017. Take it away, F Brother Fred. <clears throat> Many refer to it, meaning this time on the planet, as the sixth mass extinction. But it isn't. It's different. We are not simply in the sixth round of a continuing series of events that have devastated life on Earth. We are in the midst of the first of a new type of event. The first not the six, a new type of event unlike all the earlier mass extinction events. The five mass extinctions, you know, previous to this one, were naturally occurring cataclysmic events that completely changed the course of evolution and life on Earth. Our current event is a bioticide, an unnatural cataclysmic event that is changing the course of life on Earth. We are wiping out various forms of life at an unprecedented rate by willfully destroying landscapes, sending toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, polluting water resources, not to mention killing and over-exploiting wildlife. This destruction, meaning here in 2017, this destruction of Earth's flora and fauna is bioticide, the killing of life, the massive acceleration of the pace of eradication has been called an extinction tsunami and a biological annihilation. <clears throat> to understand why this is not a sixth mass extinction, consider the previous big five. 
The first occurred during the Ordovician Silurian transition about 440 million years ago <coughs> and lasted for up to 30 million years. It took 30 million years <coughs> for life to collapse in that one. And then the late Devonian extinction began around 360 million years ago, wiped out about 75% of life on Earth, and it persisted for up to 20 million years. Then we have the third mass extinction at the Permian-Triassic boundary, which was the deadliest of all, well, the deadliest of all until now, Scientists estimate that about 250 million years ago, over 90% of marine species, along with 75% of terrestrial species, went extinct during this event, which probably took at least 15 million years from start to stop. And then about 200 million years ago, a series of extinction pulses permeated the planet for approximately 18 million years and are collectively known as the Triassic-Jurassic extinction. The time period <clears throat> between these two extinctions was marked by massive changes in the Earth with Pangaea subdividing into Gondwana land and Laurasia. <clears throat> and finally, the most famous and last of the mass extinctions saw the disappearance of the dinosaurs and the explosion of mammals and birds. This Cretaceous tertiary event occurred about 65 million years ago and, it's, and it seems to have been the shortest of the Big Five because it might have lasted for only about one million years. And this is a point that is lost on so many people. Apparently, a lot of people think when that, when that asteroid hit the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago, if it, they think that, it, let's say, it hit on a Monday and that by Tuesday morning, life on this planet was gone. No, it, what it did, it set into motion a, a series of climatic events that took one million years to unfold before uh, the planet started to uncover. This is a huge myth, misunderstanding about this overnight extinction. <clears throat> So, what all this means is these five previous mass extinctions <clears throat> share two features that distinguish them from our current state of affairs. <clears throat> First, <coughs> all five were triggered by unpredictable and catastrophic yet natural events. They all brought havoc to the planet following changes in the Earth's atmosphere due to regularly occurring events such as asteroid impacts, volcanic eruptions, continental movements, mod can you say modifications in oceanic currents, and the Earth's wobble or shift in ax the axis of rotation. The pivotal event of the most recent, the Cretaceous Tertiary extinction was an asteroid or comet smashing into the Yucatan Peninsula region and leaving us with the Chichalub crater. Combined, that event combined with extensive volcanic eruptions in India, in modern day India, the atmospheric conditions resulted in substantial changes to both flora, flora and fauna. The Permian extinction was probably a result of volcanic eruptions that pumped carbon dioxide into the atmosphere 
along with blanketing extensive coal regions in Siberia with molten lava, which then burned the carbon that had been captured in the coal, yielding a natural situation not unlike, otherwise known as like, the present-day use of fossil fuel that feeds carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Can you say deja vu all over again? <clears throat> Second, all five of these past extinctions lasted for at least, at least one million years. Uh, determining the precise length of the time of an event that lasts for so long is quite difficult. Uh, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, but the bottom line is the big five all had durations much longer than the amount of time that modern humans have been on this planet. A million years ago, if, if you look at what's going on now at, on a million year time span, it's bullshit. A million years ago was, was way before the time of the Neanderthals. Homo erectus was still wandering about. So, <clears throat> as opposed to the five previous mass extinctions, our present biotocide is not a consequence of an unusual confluence of natural events. No, modern human beings came on the scene no more than 200,000 years ago and for nearly all of that time until we began to exterminate species during the Pleistocene extinction 20,000 to 10,000 years ago, we were part of the economy of nature. The dodo bird was first described in 1598 and last seen in 1662, but the world record for rapidity of extinction is held by the Stellar's sea cow. This huge relative of the dugong and manatee <clears throat> was discovered by Europeans in the Bering Sea in 7041, then hunted extensively by Russian fur traders and shot into non-existence by 1768, 27 years from description to disappearance. More than 500 species have been driven to extinction in North America since the pilgrims arrived at Plymouth Rock. Well, obviously, guys, a shitload more than 500, but what, what you know, this I'm not going to get into this whole rant about this 200 species a day being obliterated off this planet. What he's talking about is what most of us consider to be, quote, real species talking mainly mammals and birds and to a lesser extent reptiles, amphibians, and fish. You know, things with backbones. Those kind of species. More than 500 species have been driven to extinction in North America since the pilgrims arrived at Plymouth Rock. Within the last few hundred years, human beings have erased from the planet, not only dodo birds and stellar sea cows, but also passenger pigeons, great auks, lesser bilbies, thylacines, well, maybe not, uh, moas, blue bucks, javan tigers, caspian tigers, golden toads, bahi river dolphins, Boobal hartebeest, Sphinx macaw, Caribbean monk seals, Pyrenean ibex, quaggas, and 
many more. And more species are threatened today. In the last 30 years or so, for instance, the number of giraffes roaming the African continent has plunged by 40%. In The Origin of Species, and from 1859, Charles Darwin explained how evolution and extinction are two sides of the same coin. Darwin reasoned that, quote, though nature grants long periods of time for the work of natural selection, she does not grant an indefinite period. For, as all organic beings are striving to seize on each place in the economy of nature, if any one species does not become modified and improved in a corresponding degree with its competitors, it will be exterminated. Close quote. Getting back to Fred. When we, when we humans, disrupt this economy of nature, some species, such as mosquitoes carrying deadly diseases, adjust quite readily and spread, whereas others, such as the giraffe, have much more difficulty. Darwin also commented, quote, Rarity precedes extinction. Gee, do you think so, Charles? Rarity precedes extinction, and we know that this has been the progress of events with those animals which have been exterminated either locally or wholly through man's agency, close quote. Darwin was quite aware that people were responsible for some extinctions. Bottom line. So we are not really in a sixth great extinction, let us not deceive ourselves. Otherwise, pull your head out of your ass. Let's not deceive ourselves into thinking that this is just another in a series of catastrophes that have hit the planet. This is something never before experienced. This this collapse is a premeditated holocaust against our fellow residents of the planet. One more time, anybody failing to understand what is going on on this planet, this is a premeditated holocaust against our fellow residents of the planet as she makes her annual trip around the sun. As we decimate our planet, the canary in the coal mine finds it more difficult to sing. It is gasping for air. We are not witnessing a sixth mass extinction. We are causing the world's first by oticide. Amen, Brother Fred. And we have, from this story, a grand total of one comment. So what does Anne have to say about uh, Fred's sermon? I'm sorry, this is flower. Hi, Fred. What an awful scenario. I had not thought of this at all. Yikes! Yikes. I had not thought of this at all. And this is a reader of Manga Bay 
uh, com had never thought of this, that this is a premeditated holocaust we are inflicting upon our fellow earthlings. That is exactly what it is. Exactly. And of course, including our, our homo sapiens sapiens wise oneselves, we deserve everything we get. But uh, our fellow earthlings have done nothing to deserve this premeditated holocaust. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this uh, Sunday doomsday sermon and get back to my Bigfoot hunt while I still can. May or may not be coming back with a second sermon from one more reading from Derek Jensen's Myth of Human Supremacy about agriculture taking down a planet. We'll see how my day unfolds. Welcome to the world's first bioticide. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys.